In this video, I'm going to talk about mixed strategies equilibrium, and specifically, I'm going to try to give you some intuitions about what's going on here. So here we have a game where we have two players, and you might think of these as players in a game, um, like, a, like a sports game of some sort, where they're choosing go right or go left, and different versions of this might be the goalie in a soccer game has to choose anticipate right or anticipate left based on a player kicking the ball their direction, or it could be a tennis player who's having to serve right or serve left, and and their opponent is having to anticipate right or anticipate left. So that's one version of this. And the payoffs in this table are set up in a way that might perhaps match a game like that. Um, this isn't perfect because it's not exactly zero sum, but I think this is the clearest way to understand what's going on. So before we get going, we should remind ourselves what is Nash equilibrium? And Nash equilibrium is a no regrets equilibrium where after everything is said and done, both players can say, given what the other player did, I'm happy with my choice. In other words, I have no regrets. If either of them say, wait a second, based on what they did, I wish I would have done something else. If that happens, then you're not in Nash equilibrium, then you're going to have rejiggering of the outcome if you play this game again and again. So we want to find a situation where both players are like, okay, this is the best I could have done given their choice. That's Nash equilibrium. Now, if we solve this using the classic way of solving Nash equilibrium, which I'll post a link to below if you don't know how to do that, but I'll do that really quickly here, you solve for regular Nash equilibrium. What you're going to find is that there's no pure strategies Nash equilibrium. And in which case, is there still a Nash equilibrium? And the answer is yes, but the Nash equilibrium is going to be a case where the players mix between two strategies. And you have to think about this as the mix as being random. So each player doesn't decide this time do I go right or this time do I go left. Rather, each player says, I'm going to decide what the probability of me going right or me going left is. And if the probability is one third, then I will roll a die. And if it lands on one, a one or a two, then that, there's a one third probability of that. Then I will go right. If it lands on a three, four, five, or six, I'll go left. And you're letting the die, the random die, decide for you. Or the way I like to picture this in my head is with a tennis match, I can kind of imagine someone in the stands being the randomizer for the tennis person. So if you've calculated that you should go left with a 44% chance and right with a uh, with a 56% chance based on the strengths and weaknesses of that particular opponent and their right-handedness or left-handedness, then you would have someone in the stands who would randomly um, make a decision right or left based on some random calculator on their phone, and they would hold up red if you should go right and blue if they should go left, and that's the way you serve when you serve the ball. That's the way I think of it. Um, because it's not about which choice do you make, it's about what's your probability of going any given choice. Now, for these players, we're going to have P is the probability that player one will go right, and of course, one minus P is the probability they will go left. Same with player two, we have Q is the probability player two will go right, and one minus Q is the probability they will go left. All right, so this diagram down here, this little simple diagram is P, the probability of going right. So if we're at zero, that means we're going left 100% of the time. If we're at 100%, P equals 100%, we're going right 100% of the time. If we're at 75%, then we're going right 75% and left 25%. So you can slide this probability up and down. And that's what we're going to do in this thought experiment. However, I will start the thought experiment by imagining what if we only go left? Because we see that if we go left, our payoffs are four and zero. If we go right, our payoffs are zero and three. So your first guess might be, what if you went left with 100% probability or what if P equals zero? What would happen in that case? Well, if you're always going left, your opponent is going to figure that out pretty quickly, right? They're gonna be like, oh, 
it seems like they're always going left, and your opponent is going to say, what's my best response to that? And that means their best response to that, of course, is to go left as well. And that puts you in this box over here. Uh, you, as player one, do not like that box because you get zero in that box. So by going left all the time, you know exactly how your opponent is going to respond and it is not in your favor. So if we are down here, the response of our opponent is going to make us sad. And I like to use sad faces to map out this kind of diagram, in which case you're going to say, well, given what they did, they're always going left in response to me. I wish I would have gone right a little bit more. So I wish I would have been a little bit higher up on this P diagram. And let's also write down the opponent's response. So if P equals zero, our opponent takes advantage, we're not happy, we wish we would have played P at a little bit higher rate than zero if that happens. Now, the problem is we don't yet know how much over zero we should put P. So we might overshoot. In fact, we might completely overshoot by saying, well, what if we let P equal 100%, in which case we're always choosing right, in which case we have to ask ourselves, if our opponent notices that, what are they going to do? And of course, if we're always going right, their best response to that is to also go right. That means we're going to be in this box, our payoff is zero, in which case we're also not happy and our opponent is going to be taking advantage of us. So we're not happy at 100%. If we end up at 100%, we will wish we would have had a P that, that mixed a little bit more between left and right. So we've drawn arrows in between. Now the next thing we might do is we might take another guess. We might say, well, what if we chose P equal to 25%? Well, I won't do the math per se here, but what, what you're going to find if you do the math is that if you go right 25% chance and left 75% chance, your opponent's best response to that is to always go left because most of the time you're sort of on this bottom rung. They get more on the bottom rung by choosing left than they do by going right. So just getting this to 75% of the time is going to be better than any other choice they can make and they'll always go left. You're not going to be happy. In which case, because they're always going left, you're going to say, well, I'm not happy. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of. And I wish I would have increased the probability of going right, um, moving in that direction. And of course, you do the same exercise at 75%. At 75%, you find the same thing. Now, I'm going to do the math in other videos, but the math is going to tell us that we should set P at exactly three sevenths. And what that means is if we actually check the 50% line, we're going to not be happy and we're going to wish we would have moved down. As a matter of fact, any random point we choose for P on this map, um, we're going to find that the other player has a best response of always going left or always going right and taking advantage of our bias in some ways. And that's true of every point on the map except three sevenths, where every point above three sevenths, we're going to say, man, I'm pretty unhappy here. I wish I would have set P lower. At every point below three sevenths, they're going to say, I wish I would have set P higher. And three sevenths is the equilibrium. Now, the rule of thumb for figuring out the three sevenths seems kind of counterintuitive. Specifically, um, you set the three sevenths to make the other player indifferent between going left and going right. And the reason for that is if the other player is always going left, they're going to be taking advantage of you unless you're going in a direction that's going to cause them to switch. So you're going to be in a situation if you're not in equilibrium where you're constantly moving back and forth. So basically, if you set your P, your probability of going right, at any point above three sevenths in this diagram, your opponent is going to take advantage of that by always going left and giving you that zero, taking that two for themselves more often than not. 
and that's not going to be good for you. And that's going to cause you to decrease your P. If you decrease it too much and you're on this side, your opponent will take advantage by always going right and giving you the zero. You're not gonna be happy with that. That happens too often. So by making your opponent indifferent between going right and left, that's the only way to stop this weird cycle that's going on. So the rule of thumb is that you set your probability to make the other player indifferent between going right and going left. And I'll show you in other videos linked to below the mathematical ways of doing that, both using calculus and not using calculus.